his left jab, his mobility to slip off to the side, to stick him moving, to pick and poke. Every fight, the guy shows something else. It's going to be the same thing on the 30th. It doesn't matter who he goes in there with. When he goes into battle, he's 110% prepared. I've been working a lot on my punching power, right? the mechanic of my punches. Now I'm going to put a lot more power into my punch. The UFC fans think that Jake Shell is a big underdog. I don't believe that. I think the UFC fans doesn't give him as much credit as he deserves. I feel good, but I'm scared as hell. I'm scared as hell because it's like... Man, I so many, so many idiots in every world like saying, oh yeah, they, they look past that fight, but I don't, I don't like that feeling. I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. I don't care, that's, that's how I feel like that. That's when I perform at my best. Among the visitors at Camp Shields today is the team's smallest member, eight-month-old Layla K. Melendez. See, I'm sweet. I like babies. Oh, oh I draw babies. I'm teaching to be tough. Her father, Gilbert Melendez, is here along with Strike Force's Nick Diaz to spar with their longtime teammate, despite being only days removed from title fights of their own. We're all cool, you know, friendly guys. You know, we're always in there joking, having fun. You know, training's fun to us. These guys are all my best friends. We enjoy it. Just a teammate right there. Fought less than a week ago, and he's already helped me spar. Same with Nick. Definitely. We'll be in there, wrapping our hands, joking around, and all of a sudden we, we turn in spar mode, and we're trying to take our heads off. When we're sparring, it's fight time. We take it serious. Another of today's guests is Jack Shields, Jake's father and manager. Jack made the three-hour trip from Mountain Ranch, the sleepy town of 1500, where Jake was born and raised. Originally grew up in, um, in Calaveras County in Mountain Ranch. It's uh, the foothills of California, way out in the middle of nowhere. At the end of a dirt road, at the top of the Jesus Maria Canyon, our nearest neighbor was maybe a mile away. Jake's the youngest, um, he has two older brothers. It's probably why he's as tough as he is. He was always the one that was, you know, getting beaten on by the bigger guys. You know, growing up in that town is just, uh, just, just the way you grow up there is a little different. It makes you a little tougher than the city. You might disagree, but those mountain boys will kick the crap out of the city boys. Since we were homeschooling him, I wanted to get him involved with other kids besides just the kids of my friends and I'd wrestled and I knew it was a great sport, so we put him in wrestling. If he won a medal in the San Joaquin district, the next week he didn't want to go back there, he wanted to go somewhere where there were different kids, because he'd already beat those kids. I told him once that it was better to lose to somebody better than you and learn than to just beat somebody that you, that you could beat, and he, he understood it. Jake was very competitive. He did not like to lose. Uh, he took every loss very hard, very personal. And one of the things about Jake is he's fearless. I don't think he's one of those guys who rattles. He doesn't intimidate. I always try to teach my athletes, hey, you know, there's nobody out there that you can't beat if you put your mind to it. I think Jake is one of those people who live by that. He believes that he can win, and then he can win. It's definitely the largest fight I've ever had. It's going to be, in fact, the largest fight ever in North American history. There's going to be 55,000 people live. The crowd's going to be loud. They're going to be booing me, cheering him. But it is what it is. You know, he's something you just block out. Just me and George in that cage. You know, the crowd can yell and boo and cheer all they want. But it's just uh, it's the two of us fighting each other. I think a lot of guys are going out there already beaten. They're going out there thinking, oh, I'm fighting GSP. I can't beat him. Just thinking, maybe I can go the distance with him. And they're not going out there trying to win the fight. I'm going out there to win this fight. I'm not going out there beating like a lot of these guys. I'm going out there to take the belt from him. He 
wants to win. You know, Jake always wants to win. He loves the challenge, and he lives up to the challenge. GSP has been perfect in his last six, eight fights. He's been perfect. He hasn't lost a round. Jake goes out and does what's unexpected, and I expect him to win this fight. Montreal, the largest city in Quebec, lures visitors with its continental ambiance and timeless charm. This week, it welcomes one important guest from nearly 2,000 miles away. Greg Jackson is the man Team GSP refers to as the maestro. The master strategist has made the trip from Santa Fe to help St. Pierre fine-tune his game plan. Let's go, Jacques. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to do one 400 meter and four 50 meters. Next week will be the last week of sprints, so the workouts get shorter but more intense. It's not so much just endurance during a round, but it helps your heart rate come down between rounds. What we're mainly looking for is revving up his heart rate and then starting after a 45 second break immediately. Explode, recover, explode, recover, explode, recover. That's it. After 30 seconds, George is fully recovered. After 30 seconds. His body's in shape for anything. With Jackson in camp, the afternoon is devoted to grappling. His specialty, jujitsu. This last week or two in Montreal, we're just making sure that everything's on board, so to speak. What I really want him to do is make sure that we stay offensive, because we do want to try to finish this fight. You have to understand, Jake Shields has a certain skill set that he is very good at. That's going to be a lot of the game right there, George. If you don't respect Jake Shields, you will get beat by him. Head higher than the hips, George. Head higher than the hips. You can be winning all four rounds, and in the fifth round, you make a mistake, you're out. This is where Shields wants him to be, right there. I'm planning on not making any mistake and capitalize on Jake Shields uh, when the mistake comes. You fight how you train. It's hard to get a guy that fights exactly like Jake Shields. But what you can do is simulate timing, distancing, all of these things, and get you so sharp there that it doesn't matter who's in front of you, you're going to be able to adapt and overcome. He does believe that one in front of him is the biggest fight of his life. And because he thinks like that, he trains like that. Because he trains like that, he continues to win. The second you're like, you know, believing the hype of, oh, you know, I'm going to walk over Jake Shields, well, then Jake Shields is going to walk all over you. He's been in the spotlight the last few years. Well, I've been on the sidelines uh, beating competition just as tough, not getting, uh, not getting the respect. I'm planning on going in there and taking the fight to him. He's going to be the next guy going down into my legacy. Let's get ready. I know Jake Shelley's a hard worker, but nobody's outworking me. There's nothing I can say, nothing I can do right now. I cannot be more in shape than I am, cannot be more sharp than I am. Nice work, George. I put too much sacrifice, too much effort into this to lose. My whole life I've sacrificed towards this moment. I've put in everything I possibly could put into this fight. I want to be the guy to stop the great GSP. The 30th, I'll be my maximum peak. I raised the bar for that fight. I'm the best George Napier I can be. I'm glad he's the best GSP, because I want to beat GSP at his best. I'm the best Jake I've ever been, and I'm ready for absolute war.